Good morning, everybody. This is Vesper, and this is your breakdown for February 2nd. First off, I'd like to start by telling everyone that the Killer Instinct tutorial is going to be coming out very soon. It should be out this week. I'm going to release two videos on Dojo Mode, the basic and advanced lessons. Of me just doing a run through, I won't even commentate. I'm just going to get it done. Uh, the reason I'm releasing it a little too late is just for the sake of completion, because in the tutorial, I do suggest people to um, either watch or do the Dojo Mode, depending if you have the Killer Instinct or not just so you can get the gist of it and I can skip more of the very, very basic fighting game lessons. You guys can do me a favor and let me know what you would like to see in the tutorial for Killer Instinct. Obviously, you can expect it to be very similar to my Street Fighter 4 tutorial. Um, I won't be holding back. It's going to be quite long. And I've been writing the script for a while and a lot of notes. And yeah, it's going to be pretty huge. There's a lot to talk about, especially the basics and the combo system. But... Just in case I forget about something, or there's something that you're familiar with Killer Instinct, but you'd like to know more of, um, give me a hit, let me know, and I'll add it to the list. For the past couple of weeks, I've been working on getting my other YouTube channel set up, and uh, just uploading and transferring videos, it just takes a long time. You guys can also expect that channel to pop up sometime after my tutorial. I'll let you guys know. So today I wanted to talk about Double Helix, and just, there's a lot of things been going down lately with... Spinal coming in uh, quote unquote late and I just want to talk about how they handled releasing Spinal first and then I want to talk about the jail system after. So with Spinal, um, we've been having tweets and news about Spinal coming out in January and Ultra Pack users would get him, I would have an early access as part of the extra $20 that you pay and you get early access to characters, accessories, etc. And, you know, it kind of bugs me that we got Spinal on January 31st because when someone says January, you know, it's going to be some t point in time. But if they would have said Spinal came out, will be coming out in February, it would have been a lot better for me because then it would have just been, you know, just like a little surprise for everybody and we get a little early access. But I understand that there are some... Um, it's not in Double Helix's power that they maybe couldn't have released Spinal because Microsoft was holding them back because there's, you know, there's other forces in the works. But it's just the way they handle it, I guess. Because, well, look at the order of things that happened. First, we got, you know, the news that we're going to have Spinal in January. Then they have a live stream. They're not specifically saying what the live stream is about, but the live stream was, was basically nothing. Like, they couldn't answer any questions about Spinal. They couldn't answer. It was just them playing for an hour, and then everyone was pissed off because you know they're expecting this is for sure Spinal because it's the last two weeks before the end of January, and then you know they they told us expect us we're gonna be getting news for sure that day, and what we get is three screenshots of Spinal, which is, you know, it's kind of funny because we already know what Spinal looks like, and you know these 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 three screenshots are gonna hold off our you know our blue balls for Spinal, but you know it's we already know what he looks like. And it's just, it's funny because first they give us the screenshots and then finally they tell us about Spinal's moveset and then they release the trailer the day before he's released, the day before, and then they get exclusivity to IGN, of course. So maybe it had to do with IGN, maybe it's just, um, you know, they had like a contract in order and now is the time where they had to release it because IGN had to show it off first, right? Because that's where the money is. Who knows? I don't know, right? I'm just guessing. But it would have been nice that the the proper order would have been screenshots first because we already know what he looks like, and they could have at least answered us the questions about his move set. You know, let us let us know just about the character. I'm sure you're not breaking any rules by telling us his move set or what he does or anything, and especially the trailer. The trailer should have been released halfway through the month, just so we know what the character you know what he's about. So, honestly, it doesn't it doesn't piss me off that much. But I'm sure it pissed off a lot of people in general. I'm sure Double Helix got a lot of feedback from that stream. And like obviously they won't be repeating it again. So the next thing I want to talk about is this jail mode. Now, if you guys haven't been keeping up with the news lately, in the latest patch when Spinal came out, they released this jail mode thing. And it was the way to uh, address rage quitters. Now, every game has problems with rage quitters. It's it's in fighting games, man, it, it is night and day. Rage quitters are just, re it's really, really common. 
So it's kind of funny because the way that Double Helix handled this is they created this elaborate system where if you have a certain percentage of disconnects, you'll go to quote unquote jail. And what it does is it gives you a jail icon on your profile and you'll only be playing other people in jail and you'll be banned for, well not banned, but you'll be only playing people from jail for 24 hours or 24 hours. Now, there's sort of some other stuff with it too, but you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, this is, you know, this is such a cool idea and, you know, props to Double Helix and, and, you know, it's really funny and stuff. But the way I see it is it's just a big waste of time because they spent this time developing this elaborate system when they should have just, you know, laid down the hammer and just rage quitters get lost. And that, and that's it. It's done with because Let's face it, Killer Instinct is not an, a huge, robust game. We don't even have a story mode or an arcade mode. It, you know, the game is is and it's a, a console exclusive game. You know, all the development time should be making this game as big as possible to attract as many people as possible. We shouldn't be spending development time on this kind of gimmicky, you know, rage quitting thing. Like, we should <laughs> we shouldn't be giving rage quitters attention at all in terms of of game design. That's just the way I see it. So, rage quitting, the way it works, like, in general, for people, the mindset is just, people are always going to take the easy path in life. Most people always take the easy path. And fighting games, is, it's, it's, really, it's really serious because, you know, it's 1v1. Nobody likes to lose. And so, if you have the option to pull the plug, especially when you just say, Xbox, turn off, and it won't give you a loss... You know, it's tempting. A lot of people are going to take it. So the the person who's losing is happy because he doesn't get a loss and he can just keep playing for whatever reason. He's like, oh, this guy's too cheap. Boom, rage quit, right? But the winner, he also doesn't get a win. And that's going to piss people who are winning off. And honestly, this is a, this is a serious problem because you want you don't want like a community where people are pissed off because, after they're playing a match. Like this is a serious issue. It's, the way it should be is if you disconnect... It's a loss. It doesn't matter if you disconnect it on purpose or if, you know, if it was an accident, your power went out or whatever. And it's like, oh, I got a loss, you know. But, like, honestly, tough luck. You got one loss. Big deal. Your power is not going to go out every five minutes. And at the same time, if if your internet connection is bad and you're constantly getting losses because of it, you might be saying to yourself, hmm, maybe I should get a better internet connection. It's, it's just the way it is. Like, that's the way you have to address it. Even I would even say get two losses for a disconnect because the harsher it is, the, the less incentive there is for people to do it. If I'm, if I'm going to rage quit and I know I'm going to get a loss and I rage quit and the other player gets a win, sure, I, you can still rage quit, but the other guy is not going to be pissed because he gets a win anyways. So in the end, I'm just saying that it, shouldn't, it should be some, a really simple matter to just finish and uh if you guys read the uh, news recently there is now a problem where people are going to jail when they're not the person who disconnected so in other words the game uh can't tell who actually disconnected and either the person or either both players are going to jail or are the person who isn't and this already happened to a few people already and you know now it's Double Helix has created this elaborate jail system, and now they already have problems, and they have to fix it. So, even more development time is going into this. So, maybe I'm blowing this out of proportion, making it sound worse than it actually is. Let me know. But this is just the way I see it right now. Now, I'm not trying to bash Double Helix. A lot of companies are are having these issues. But what I'm starting to notice a trend is is that everyone is trying to please everybody. And it just it just doesn't work that way. The majority of players are going to have decent connections, and they're going to be decent people who do not rage quit every game or loss just so they can get higher on ranked leaderboards. That is not normal behavior, and you should cater towards the bigger crowd of people. That's that's all I'm saying. Now I read somewhere on the forums that on the stream Double Helix said that for now Killer Instinct is only going to be on Xbox One and will not be coming to PC or Steam. And that really upsets me because fighting games, they're, they're a niche already. It's, 
they fighting games are a niche and when you have a niche genre on a game that's console exclusive it just it just makes it such a small community than it already is and killer instinct for it to be on like an amazing game it needs to come on pc it needs to and if it does like what's gonna happen is if it doesn't it's gonna get overshadowed by other fighting games that will be coming out in the future that will be on every console including pc and i definitely don't want that because i think killer instincts is an awesome game but that's just the way i see it right now anyways i hope this breakdown wasn't too negative <laughs> but uh if you guys have any questions this doesn't have to be game related this is the place to ask and uh, I'll try to answer all the questions. So anyways, I'll see you guys later.